Our next speaker is Professor Ni Lei, the Dean of School of Traffic and Transportation of Beijing's Xiaotong University. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm Lei Li from Beijing Jiaotong University. Actually, Jiaotong, sorry, which one? Jiaotong, just as a pronounce of Chinese words. Actually, it means transportation. Okay, I would like to give you some information about the transportation systems, uh, the history and the development in China. Uh, it will include five parts. First, uh, I would like to give you some general information about the comprehensive transportation. And uh, the third, I would focus on the railway systems in China because China is a big country with large populations and we need more green and uh, large capacity transportation. So we use a lot of tra railway transportation. Uh, first, uh, we know the transportation has very close relationships with the economy. Let's take a look uh, of uh, the first uh, uh, reform and opening to the, uh, to the world in the year of 1978. The GDP in China increased very sharply. And at the same time, the traffic demand from the uh, passenger uh, and the freight divisions also increased uh, the same ways. Uh, but we can see the government in this uh, in these twenty years after the, uh, after nineteen seventeen eight. We focus more on the road transportation and the air transportation. And the railway transportation is this almost uh, did not increase uh, enough. So in China, the capacity of railway transportation is shortage and it becomes the busiest uh, railways in China. Uh, in the world. For example, most of rural materials are transported by the railway. And uh, in railway stations are full of passengers. Without enough capacities of railways, so many trucks transported cars also crowded into the highways. In cities, without enough subways, and the traffic jams is also a big problem. So our government want to investment or not to improve and to construct a modern comprehensive transportation systems. So our government want to construct a new modern transportation systems. In this new comprehensive transportation we want to keep uh, different types of transportation modes in coordination and in cooperation with some new ideas. For example, operated in marked and uh, with sustainable and the poverty reduced goals. Uh, finally, we want to provide a rapid passenger transportation and the freight transportation based on logistic as ideas. For example, in the past five years, our government has invested 1.34 trillion RMB in, in transportation infrastructure in the last five years. So the road transportation and the, the air transportation increased in recent 20 years sharply. And besides these two kind of transportation, railway, or this, the waterways, railways, 
and the pipelines also get full development. Uh, even though the railways is still the busiest uh, transportation in the world. For example, in the year of 2005, the routiness of Chinese railways is only 6% in the world, but we finished one fourth of transportation volumes. Oh, so we have formed a very modern transportation systems. For example, the national freeways. This is the network. And by the end of the year 2016, the freeways is about 130,000 kilometers, which is number one in the world. And uh, the great uh, exciting things is the high-speed railway networks. We can see it almost uh, covered uh, all of the coast and, and uh, uh, central areas of China, even to the east uh, west areas. And by the end of last year, it, the routineness is about uh, 22,000 kilometers, which is also the number one in the world. Okay, let's take a look at the L9 transportation, L transportations. Actually, it increased uh, a lot in, uh, in the past 20 years. And uh, by the end of last year, the revenue 10 kilometers is 96.1 billion ton kilometers, now, which is the number two in the world, and the number one is American. And uh, for the waterways, let's take a look. Uh, for example, according to the throughput of the container ports, the first 10 Top 10 container ports in the world, in which seven of them located in China. Also, in the city uh, transportation systems, we expanded a lot of subways. For example, now 25 cities have subways, and another uh, cities are on the construction or on the planning, which the routine is also the number one in the world. Besides the networks, the infrastructures, the internet, the information systems also uh, are used in the railway systems and uh, bring a lot of convenience for people's travel. For example, the sea trip uh, companies can provide a package of tra travel trips for China's uh, people's uh, travel. And the uh, DD Xing, which is somewhat a uh, company like Uber, but I think it's more convenient than Uber. Uh, yes. Yeah, actually in China, it, uh, the Uber is incorporated uh, by the DD companies. And besides this, uh, besides this, the, we, for the last, uh, for the last one kilometers, uh, in most of uh, big cities, we can provide sharing bicycles, uh, for example, the mobile and the OFO, which means at any time, and you can use the bicycles to anywhere. So through recent 20 years, quick development and uh, the structure of transportation systems uh, in China become more and more reasonable. For the passenger transportation, we can see almost uh, the railways, the civil uh, aviations, and uh, the highways occupied 
one third of the market shares. And also is the same in the freight transportations. It tells us in China, not only passenger transportation, but also freight transportations use a lot of the green transportations that is railway system. So let's take a look at the achievements of Chinese railway systems. I would like to get some information in four aspects. The first is heavy haul railway, and the second is speed increasing of conventional railways and high speed railway and uh, some railway passenger stations. And first, uh, we have uh, established the technology systems for the heavy haul railway systems. For example, the Busiest core railway dedicated lines in the world is Daqing Heaver Hall Railway Lines. Each year, these lines can transport four, uh, four, 445 million tons, and uh, each train with 30,000 tons. It's a very long train. And uh, we also have uh, the technology of speed increasing. Actually, in China, the railway system has experienced the six large scale speed increases. Uh, after speed increases, the older railway systems, the speed has been increased from less than 100 kilometers per hour to 130 and even more than 215 kilometers. This is the technology systems of speed increasing. Uh, the more exciting is high speed railway systems. The technology is very complicated. Uh, after recent 10 years quickly development, the China can construct high speed railways in very complicated geologic and climatic areas. Let's take a look. We have a series of world-class railway projects. For example, in a mountains, we constructed the four tunnels very close. For example, the short distance between two, uh, two tunnels is only three meters. That technology is very, very difficult. And also, we can construct a very long tunnels for high-speed trains. And uh, we also have technologies to build very long bridges with the speed of 300 kilometers and longer more than nine kilometers on Yangtze River. Uh, this is the longest high-speed railway from Beijing to Guangzhou. It's more than 2,000 kilometers. And uh, the railways across different climate roads, such as temperate and uh, subtropic roads and various geographic environment. And uh, the top neighbor high-speed railways from Beijing to Shanghai. Also, it's the very busy high-speed railways in China is more than 1,300 kilometers longer. And the Harbin Dali High Speed Railways, which is the first high speed railway uh, be constructed in the very cold areas, minus 40 degrees in winter. Yeah, the trains can run at the speed of 300 kilometers per hour. And uh, also, we have uh, Nanzhou to Xinjiang high speed railways. It's the longer is 1,700 kilometers longer. And these railway lines across the Gobi Desert and also the world famous wind zones with the wind speed up to 30 kilometers per hour. The wind is very strong, can blow down the trains, but after the operation of the Israeli lines, no stops. 
we also constructed a lot of uh, large railway stations with, uh, with the sameness ideals. That means uh, many, many types of transportation modes connected to the high-speed railway stations. So it's very easy to get and uh, out of the high-speed railway stations. It's an international hub. Let's take a look at the contribution of high-speed railways. According to the ticket price, actually in China, the ticket price is only one third or one fourth of the ticket price in Japan and in European country. And uh, the passengers increased uh, very quickly year by year. For example, last year, we the high speed trains transmitted about 1.4 billion people. That means moved the whole Chinese people. The high speed trains, and it almost uh, uh, accounted for half of the passengers transported by railway systems. And uh, even the first uh, newly constructed high speed railway is put into operation in the year of 2008. But up to now, at least five of them can make balance of the cost. Also, high-speed trains save a lot of time for our tribes. For example, I take the data of 2030s for Beijing to Shanghai high speed railways. Each, this year, it can save 11.5 billion Chinese yuan for the time cost, for the time reduce. And uh, we can compare the, the reduce of many transportation ODs. Many, many transportation times can be reduced to uh, one third or four third of the original trains. So the countries become more and more smaller. And it also bring great economic benefit. For example, it bring a lot of job opportunities for construction railways, especially in civil engineer, metallurgy, uh, electronic machinery manufacturers, and also it promotes a lot for the tourism in many cities. Okay, many, many people ask me, how can Chinese people make that? Let's give me some reasons. Uh, discussing the, we discussed many, many times. I gave some conclusions is the five key points. First is the strong support from the government. Uh, our government attached very attention, very great attention on railway construction. And the central government helped us to solve the financial problems. And the local government help us to solve the land use problems. This is the two big from the problems to construct railways. It's solved by the government, so it's become smoothly to uh, make progress of the construction works. And the second is our government state very scientific uh, plannings. For example, in the next five years, we will construct four vertical, uh, 10 vertical and 10 horizontal transportation corridors from north to south and to, from east to west to balance the, the development of the whole country. You know, these areas, the waste areas is not good uh, developed in China. And uh, we also want to extend our network, railway networks. For
For example, at the end of 2020, the routine length of railways were expanded to 115,000 kilometers, but it's still less than the railways in America. And we also well extended the high sphere railway networks to 30,000 kilometers, which is about uh, bubbles of the rest of the the, country, the countries in the world. And we will extend the, the four plus four corridor lines to eight, eight plus eight corridor lines also from north to south, from east to west. Besides this, we also want to extend our intercity railway planning to support new urbanizations with the kilometers of 20 thousand kilometers and the city clusters can travel in one or four numbers by intercity trains and the, the uh, one big cities to the uh, to the combination uh, areas within half number and two numbers and the third is we have choose the suitable technology roadmaps we constructed our technology systems with the combination of original innovation, integrated innovation, and the re-innovation of import, digestion, and absorption. And the fourth is the efficient management mechanisms. For example, our government set a very efficient financial systems to solve the to solve the investment problems. The last is also very important. In China, the railway systems get systematic support from many, many different variants. For example, from transportation and administrations, manufacturing, a lot of universities, connections, research and designing institutions. My university is, is also the top level universities in their way sections. My university is, is constructed uh, about 120 years ago. The original is original for the Beijing Railway Institute. And uh, before the year of 2000, it's under the administration of Minister of Railway. And then we moved the administration to the education, uh, to the Ministry of Education. And now our university has extended to a comprehensive university for multimodal transportation. And we have established the great corporations with many famous universities and uh, companies in the world. We have done a lot of research and training programs on whole transport systems, especially on railway. For example, the Egypt, we get international trainings for Egypt, Spania, Ethiopia, and we provide master programs on railway operation management. So training programs on Uganda, Libya, Thailand, India, and not of. So, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Welcome to China and uh, welcome to my university. Thank you all. Thank you.